Welcome back to Strength in Scripture. Every human being will be judged to determine their fitness for heaven. This work of judgment is not performed by us, but by our Creator, who has established the principles of morality, human interaction, and principled living that show His character in this world. To believe that we can live however we want without consequence is not consistent with Scripture. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 states that it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The judgment of God is righteous. The wicked and the righteous both receive their just reward. 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 32 makes this appeal. Then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justify the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. The high court of heaven has a legal system administered in righteousness. There is no possibility of misrepresentation or deception. Psalms chapter 9 verse 7 and 8 tells us that the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. We can determine from scripture what is the structure, composition, and rules of order of the heavenly court. According to Psalms chapter 50 verse 6, the judge of the court is God himself. The Apostle Paul declares in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 that God is the judge of all. In Revelation chapter 4, we see that around the judgment seat there's a jury composed of 24 elders. The accused who are on trial are you and I, and in fact the whole human race. For the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 3 verses 10 and 23 states that it is written, there is none righteous, no not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 14 verse 12, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. As the accused, each of us will have an opportunity to have our case examined. Jeremiah 32 verse 19. Great in counsel, mighty in work, for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Fortunately, we do not appear before the judgment alone. We have an advocate. 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Romans chapter 8 verse 34 and Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 give us great hope that when we accept Christ, he intercedes for us. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. There is also a prosecuting attorney who brings the accusation against the defendant. According to Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, the accuser of the brethren is none other than Satan himself. According to Revelation chapter 5 11, an innumerable host of angels gathers around the throne to witness these proceedings. When the proceedings begin, we are judged according to the established laws which have been made known to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The evidence presented at the trial is found in the records kept in heaven. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 says, Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. The names of all who accepted salvation are written in the book of life. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 states that at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Sadly, those who do not accept the gift of salvation find their names recorded in the book of death. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 6 and 7 states, Behold, it is written before me, your iniquities and your iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord. Satan accuses us from this record. This is why Christ admonishes us in Matthew chapter 12 verse 36 and 37 that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. 
In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, John says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. In order for Christ to be able to intercede for us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, we read, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. While the wicked are condemned, we who have accepted Christ have no fear of judgment. Instead, Paul states in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let this be our experience, that we would accept Christ, and on that day of judgment know that we have been strengthened by Him, strengthened in the study of Scripture.